Charlottesville. Uh, I like to call him a right man in a left town. So uh, the voice of conservatism here to talk to us about conservatism versus the media is Joe Thomas himself. Good morning. Seems so much more than I deserve. Uh, thank you for waiting for me. I appreciate that. I was uh, caught behind some people who thought just sitting in a parking lot was a good idea to just wait for a traffic, a parking spot to evolve, I guess, naturally at some point or another. Uh, the media and conservatism and why they just don't seem to get along is actually a fairly easy question to answer. It comes down to what is the media's, the, the mass media's, number one job. Anyone know what the mass media's number one job is? Take a guess. All right, nuance that a little bit. How do they do that? He said make money. Entertaining people. Advertise? Play on the emotions. News coverage. Well, now, I heard advertise and entertain, but how do they, how do they monetize their entertainment? No, that's, that's one of the tools they use, but what, what, what is the, the statistic that they use to turn their work into money? Ratings. Somebody said it over here, ratings. Ratings simply mean pandering to the lowest common denominator, to their lowest possible basis instincts. What does everyone want? They want to be safe. They want to feel good. They want to feel comfortable, especially after you get home from class or work. And you don't want to sit at home and think, oh gosh, what else do I have to do? And we're unique. The last two or three generations of Americans are unique in the fact that when we punch out at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock, we're done. Your grandparents probably don't have any concept of off time because they would work until whatever job they had was done. Then they'd come home and they had other things they had to do, whether it be familial things, cooking, cleaning chores. The concept of off time is where the media has stepped in and said, we'll take care of you. Don't worry. The world is safe. We're going to chop it up into nice little bits, whether it's for information. We'll tell you what you need to know. You can trust us. We're your friends. And they pander to that. Is there any political group that you can think of that works off that same business model of we'll take care of you? Oh, sorry. Hmm? Okay. Democrats co-opted by the liberals. The, the liberals play on the idea of we're from the government and we're here to help. It's a marriage made in heaven. It's a media that wants you to feel like they'll take care of everything for you so that they will be your most favorite TV network or most favorite TV show or most favorite radio station. They don't want to ever tell you you have to do anything you might not want to do because then you'll go find somebody else that will tell you what you want to hear. That's why conservatism in the media, the mass media, are anathema. Because conservatism says you can do whatever you want you can achieve whatever your gifts give you the talent and the inclination to go and get, but you have to do it. And that, that doesn't leave a lot of off time. That doesn't leave a lot of, oh, come here and have a snuggle with us and we'll keep you safe or entertained, which is what the media plays on. The media just wants to be popular. I'm sure many of you know people in your, at very least your high school classes, that just seem hell-bent on hanging out him. Or he knows people. <laughs> By the way, that was one of the campus buses you just got thrown under. Um, one of those kids in their high school class that just was hell-bent on hanging out with the cheerleader or the football team, whether they were a football player or a cheerleader or not. They just had to be with the cool kids. That's the mass media. And that's why they've become such an easy fit for 
liberal socialism. Because liberal socialists don't want you to try to strive for anything. They want to be the cool kids. The media, they want to be the cool kids. They want everybody watching their TV show. They want everybody listening to their radio station. And all of a sudden, a four-letter word came along. I've always wanted to do it. <laughs> a four-letter word came along. That's not a name. It's a verb. <laughs> he came along and said, no, 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 you don't understand. There's guys like William F. Buckley and Russell Kirk who've been around a long time telling you all the things you could do are limitless to your inclinations and your talents and your skills if everyone would just get out of your way and let you achieve it. And people said, really? And it was alternative radio. Not musically alternative, but nobody was saying this 20, 20, 22 years ago now. Nobody was saying this then. Very few people are saying it now. And it struck a chord because <laughs> despite everything else, despite the majority of television programming, despite the fact that most radio programming is programmed to the lowest common denominator, we are still at minimum 52 to 48 percent conservative leaning when surveyed. Sometimes it goes all the way up near 60 percent conservative. But even in the most liberal places like New York City, when push comes to shove, they'll elect a conservative Republican as their mayor. Because at the bottom line, we realize that in the document that starts, we the people, is the essence of conservatism. That's why Edmund Burke, who is a member of parliament, an Irishman, but still a member of parliament, was such a huge supporter of the American Revolution. And people say, well, how could that be? If he was a conservative, he should be standing up for keeping things the same. No, conservatism isn't about keeping things static and the same. It's about there are certain inalienable inherent laws. Right and wrong is not a governmental function. And that's the thing that the media doesn't want to get into. Media wants to get into happy and sad. They don't want to get into right and wrong. Right and wrong is too judgmental. People might feel off-put if the media said something was right or wrong. And that's why Rush and all of his descendants, myself included, have brought those words to the fore. And you still see it, even in a place like you said, the right man in a left town. Not so fast. Charlottesville's changing. You may actually see somebody, though not running as one, but a Republican nonetheless on Charlottesville City Council come November. We may see two more Republicans go onto the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors because like New York City, when they elected Rudolph Giuliani, their mayor, the people of this area are saying, hold on a second here. You want to take my property and do what? You want me to pay more for something you should have been doing all along? And the message gets through. Part of the joy of, of conservative talk radio is in general we have discussions like this where the left wing will call you names I don't know if you ever take a moment to listen to a Stephanie Miller or an Ed Schultz Ed calls himself the prairie populist I call him the prairie pieholder but <laughs> but they deal in name calling they've been calling George Bush names forever and you can agree or disagree with what George Bush you know, did as president but you don't have to name call. 